welcome back to another little vlog. I'm just gonna film my day today. Everyone, the past two vlogs I've done, I've had really good feedback on, so I'm really enjoying doing them, to be honest. I'm gonna keep doing them. I'm gonna run them until people aren't enjoying them anymore. Um, but today I've got an upper body session and we're going to a new gym and Ultraflex has just opened near us. There is another one. The original one is actually very close to where my mum and dad live. We're gonna go and do upper today. I'm gonna be following Dan's session because um, he wants to train back and we're gonna train together because I get gym anxiety when I try a new gym. Um, so I'm just gonna train with him and sort of, he's gonna look after me. Um, and I think we're gonna do that mic'd up. To be honest, I think it's just helpful to show that like, even if you've been going to the gym for ages, you can still get gym anxiety. You might get gym anxiety in a new environment. It's kind of normal. Uh, to be honest, is it even anxiety? Cause you're like, it's quite normal to be nervous about being in a new environment. I'm also on week three now of my cut. So I'm gonna give you a bit of an update. I'll show you my final bulking pictures and how that went. Um, talk to you a little bit about that. Just got some fitnessy content in here. Um, and I'm just about to go and get my hair done. And I'm really, really excited because Jason used to work at Dickie Bo, but he's left now. He's at a place called Concept. He is my hairdresser. If you are in the Leeds area, especially if you're a student and you need someone that's based in the city centre, cannot recommend Jason enough, especially if you're blonde, mainly because he loves doing blonde, like that is where his passion lies. When I first started going to him, he would never take my hair darker, it would only be lighter. But we have gone gradually a bit darker and he's now got his own little studio in concept so i'm very very excited to go i will show you what that's like um but we're gonna do a bit of a trim because my hair is like if i straighten my hair which i was saying on instagram the other day i never do it would be down to my belly button now but because i have quite a lot of hair uh, what just happened to my voice because i've got quite a lot of hair it's not really holding a style well and this isn't something i've ever encountered with my hair before but because it's so heavy it's not really holding a style well, well anymore so it does need a bit of a trim i'm not going short short but it does need a bit of a trim um neaten up the ends and we're going to take it a tiny bit lighter you're probably not going to notice too much of a difference um but i just want a little bit more dimension in there for summer the last time i went light was before i went to ibiza last year i want something a bit different to that um i wasn't the hugest fan of that it was a bit too warm for me but i'm sure jason is gonna smash my hair today if i mentioned but it's tuesday today it's 25 to 10 so i need to actually to be fair i might actually just go in what i've got on which is a t-shirt and some joggers i might actually just put some socks on and go like this but i need to set off soon because <clears throat> His old spot used to be like a two minute walk. This one's like a 15 minute walk. So we've got to get a wriggle on. Um, but yes, welcome to another little fitness vlog and some solid hard concrete proof evidence that I do train upper body. I just don't film it normally. One, because it's never, ever, ever as highly requested as lower. Like as much as people get annoyed at people just posting leg workouts, I can tell you like, my audience may request upper body workouts once in a blue moon, but they are nowhere near as requested as lower body workouts. And I try to listen to what people want. Um, so that's why also filming your own upper body workouts is way harder than filming a lower session. Maybe it's just because I don't film upper body workouts. I don't know like the right angles and all that sort of stuff. So maybe I just need to film more, but it'll be more like vlog style today because I'm not going to take my big bitch tripod which is what you're on now that reminds me actually i need to make sure i can get this off and take my little gorilla tripod but yeah we're gonna walk down to concept now and get my hair done she's a greasy girl my hair looks i always think my hair looks really quite cute with the little spiky bits here and then i feel like i turn to the side and i just look I feel like it sticks so far off the back of my head and I've already got a big head. We don't need to make it look any bigger. Um, but yes, let's go get my hair done, guys. I'm gonna spend the day together. It's gonna be beautiful. Hi. Hello. If I do a bun and leave the front bit out, it doesn't look like I've just not done my hair. Yeah. But not I'm probably jaw. Jawline. Yeah, I think yeah. about jawline. It, it looked good. 
but I don't think you'd like it. Yeah. Let's go lighter through here, here, and the back of your neck. So you've got like a bit of a ribbon of lightness. Yeah. But tone it all down. Yeah. But that's obviously, it's still really soft, but you're going to see a difference with it. Let's, Let's go. Stunning. Let's go. Stunning. We're now on the way to the gym. Say hi, Dan. But not for too long because he's driving, so he needs to concentrate. Yeah, the last clip you saw was Jason putting the colour in my hair, so I'm done. My hair is done. I feel like the lighting is not the best for showing it off, but one thing that Jason is really good at is I never actually know what I want, if that makes sense. Like, I know what I want, but I don't know what that is. And last time when we've tried to lighten my hair, I haven't liked it because it's just been not soft enough. And because I wear my hair up a lot, if it's not soft enough, it ends up looking a little bit blocky. Basically, he only put in a few little sort of highlights, but it was underneath my hair. I don't know if that's low lights, but he basically described it. It makes like a ribbon effect so that when my hair's curled, you get this nice like dimension. Thing is, I'll put a video in so you can see when he was cutting my hair he was like amy what's this and i've basically got a little tuft on the back of my head because i had a bald patch from wearing my hair in super 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 tight ponytails so it's funny because i have a little tuft on the back of my head but it was also like a relief because it means that the bald patch is exiting left my hair's growing back i feel like you can see my hair better in this light and it's like very subtly lightened i really like it and we've kept it like warm chocolate brown vibes i've just realized i've been looking at my viewfinder 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 this entire time because i'm not sure on the lighting but yeah we're driving to ultraflex the new one that's just open in north leeds and we're gonna do upper body we're just gonna f i'm not actually gonna follow my training program today i'm just gonna do what dan wants me to do <laughs> So we'll put a mic on each so you can hear us and to be honest so that I don't get done for copyright because with my last vlog I uploaded it and then I got a copyright strike so I had to very quickly take it down and edit that bit of audio out but hopefully using my mic should avoid that so yeah well if you've watched my vlog I've still got the pug in my um, gym bag let me actually find it still in the gym bag he's been helping me hit some pbs um but yeah shall i actually just put him with his little i kind of like having him as a gym mascot to be honest so i think i'll actually just leave him in my gym bag but yeah i've actually i am a bit nervous but what about gym time i get gym anxiety <laughs> in a new gym anyway <laughs> right, oh, right see you at the gym bye also i forgot to mention but i'm gonna make myself a quick little pre-workout this is a pea science one it's nearly empty i don't have that much left in it um it's not a stim one because i've just had a coffee i'm gonna take a bit of this this flavor is also very nice this does make me feel sick though i will say that but yeah i'm gonna make a little pre-workout look what a world we've been living in. Wish the year would begin again. Maybe then I could get it in when I had shit. Get up in the club with all the ratchets going bad shit. Whoa. First got me fired from a higher. Yeah, those grips are fast as fuck. You need some straps on these. Oh. I done. Hee <laughs> hee. I didn't grind it on my life just to get a race. Yeah. Angry, but I really didn't have no time to waste. I buckled down to work, ended up on buckling pants. Quarantine feeling like a prison. So you know a nigga needs some visits. I should be repenting, but I've been lonely as fuck. What I really think I needed some love. I've been driven by lust, so my rap shit's rusting away. And my bank account's still underpaid. I stay posted up in bed with some cartoons, watching some news source telling us it's still cases. What a sad day. 
Matter of fact, what it said, yeah, this is ten times worse than the past years. Got racism running rampant, but the racism been happening. This ain't nothing new. Drop, can you hear us now to expose the truth? The government never cared what we living through. We're screaming out black lives, but they yelling blue. So the police find looking like some soldiers do. That's some crazy shit. Could you be wrong by an idiot? Fuck. But the only other candidate, so I bet the file and a hero who ain't fit for being president. Like in any way. Yeah, it's twisted a bit. That's what I mean, it's what yeah. I mean, you can't really twist it because these That's twists. fine, that's fine. On me. I can feel the devil still praying on me Got too many thoughts in my head Wanna drop songs But I feel like nobody's waiting on me Damn I just need good news I need some soul food I just wanna smile again I just need good news I need some soul food Yeah I just wanna smile I need good news Yeah I need soul food Yeah I just wanna I'm on Ever since May when I saw sirens and the boys This has to go on a very light way What the fuck? Yeah, that's good Nice Nice Oh, look at the concentration <laughs> Nice hair Jack, bro My bicep feels like it's gonna rip You've lost count, haven't you? Yeah <laughs> For my license and my paperwork, I was shaking in the whip, praying up to God that this car wouldn't be my coffin. Left nauseous, sick to my stomach, bro. Mama raised me up like a huxtable. Don't swear, don't drink, don't smoke, dress nice, study hard. Then none of it matter though. All they ever see is a black nigga. Ain't nobody care about the other shit. Just graduated USC. Next. One more pull, 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 pull. Yeah, we're gonna slow you down, slow you down. Okay. Come on then. You think you're big? I've got another. Do you? Go on then. No help. See my eulogy on News Channel 6 Nothing's guaranteed in this cold world They gon' do everything they can do Just to make sure that they silent you Fuck it, I'll speak my truth They ain't too valuable, look Yeah, I feel like the road to liberation Been a long one I just write these songs Cause it's been weighing on me And I need an outlet How does something like this Make somebody hate us All we want is to be free in a country that my people built from ground up Back when all my people were still bound up Mass incarceration got me down Cause black is beautiful, I scream it out But the system only ever wants to drown us Fuck I just need good news I need some soul food, yeah I just wanna smile again I need some good news I need some soul food, yeah I just wanna smile back from the gym now the time has run away from me today it's literally 20 past six so the day's gone really fast but yeah we we're training at the new ultraflex which is in north leeds like i said we did a back and biceps day together you'll know by the time that you get to this clip how the footage has been used we did do it mic'd up but i've got a sneaking suspicion i'm gonna get a copyright strike because um the music that they were playing in there was like drake and all that sort of stuff that i normally would get a copyright strike for so even with the mics i think i might have to use tiny little bits of the mic footage but then just put music over the rest of it so i do apologize because the intention was like a trying a new gym vlog but to be honest as well my gym anxiety kind of got the better of me because it was just a very I don't want to say weird environment because the people that work there like the guy that was on the front desk was really nice but like the environment was very different to the gym I go to now which I'm super comfortable at I use my camera I use my mic maybe it's just because it was the first time I've ever been in that gym and I just felt a little bit awkward because it's only a 20 minute drive there was a possibility that if I really liked that gym I could have changed my membership from my current gym to that gym but I'm definitely not going to be doing that so I'll be staying at my current gym but it was nice to have a different training environment to do Dan's training because I don't normally train with him watching some of that footage back is wild because I've only really 
seriously started training upper body properly again since October just because every time I start training upper body properly my upper body gets so big so quick not like huge I don't think I'm huge but like I just build muscle in my upper body so much quicker than my lower body and for some people that's the look that they want for me personally it's not the look that I want so sometimes I just need to be careful <laughs> with training upper body but looking at that footage is crazy because my back looks really 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 good to say I've only been training upper seriously again for like six months and then we're gonna walk to Tesco and get some seasoning for the chili that I want to make for tea oh, and i'm gonna make myself a toast cinnamon shake that's the best vegan protein so yeah Hyaluronic Acid Moisturiser. That's what I use all in the morning with some of the Kiehl's eye cream. I don't think you need eye cream. I did read somewhere that you don't need it. I'm not sure if that's true. I'm not a dermatologist, but I just like the way it makes my under eyes look. Especially if I'm wearing makeup, which I did wear makeup today. My makeup looks so crusty in that last clip. I've only just realised. So I do apologise. However, now that my face is dry, because you need your face to be dry. So this is the Medicaid Retinal three so this comes in different strengths and you're meant to start lower and work your way up i think you can get one, like a one in this it goes one three six ten twenty um but based off the advice that i got given i don't think one would do much so i've started on number three i've been using this for one week so currently i am using this two nights a week and then that's for the first two weeks that's what i'm going to do then I'm going to use it every other night for two weeks, see how I get on, and if I'm fine, I'm then going to start using it every single night. Um, it's something that you need to sort of use gradually, just to keep an eye on how your skin reacts, because some people's skin doesn't react well to it, or reacts in the way you may expect the skin to react, so like peeling and stuff, but um, you can kind of limit how much it does that by gradually starting to use it, and also starting on a lower one. So. I started with number three, dot it on my face and then I rub it all in, um, but yeah, I turned 24 this year, that doesn't really mean anything, but when I was younger, I was a sunbed basher, I'm not talking about light use, I'm talking about heavy use of sunbeds, um, in my late teens, I would use them three to four times a week, um, and I believe as a result of that, I do have well, I mean, I don't believe, it's common sense. I've got a lot more sun damage than I should do for my age. I accept aging is something we will all go through, but like, I don't want to age from Charlie. And if anyone finds that offensive, okay. But it's just not something that I want to do. I've started getting fine lines on my forehead. And next week, I'll be going up to using this every other night. And if you want me to keep you posted on when I up the strength or anything like that, let me know. I did look into getting tretinoin, but it just seems like a bit of a rougher teething process. So I'm just going with this first because I feel like it's a good, it is expensive, but it's a good like entry level in terms of like potential irritation to skin introduction to retinols. So we've got the La Roche Posay Cicoplast Balm B5 Plus, whatever that means. I got this as my nighttime moisturiser for the nights when I'm using um, the retinol just 
for some extra hydration because this is like really really hydrating and to be honest i'm actually really enjoying this i'm enjoying this under makeup as well i think i put this on under my makeup earlier i have tried the walida skin food before and for the first few weeks you'll know like i recommended it i loved it because i do genuinely love how it makes my makeup look and how it makes my skin look but after a few weeks i started to get breakouts on my cheeks which is somewhere i just don't get breakouts like all around my nose on my cheeks i never ever break out there so i know if i'm getting a breakout in that area it's probably a product i've been using um so i stopped using it and it went away straight away so i think it was maybe the like heavy essential oils and fragrance in the walida skin food that was breaking me out but i really like the texture of it and like the just like the way it made my makeup look and the way it made my skin feel so this is like very similar but without the essential oils don't know if it's similar ingredients wise but my skin has been enjoying this so far because it is a thicker moisturizer i will keep you updated on this because i've only been using it for a week just like the retinol so we'll see how that one pans out but i just put that over it just to make sure my skin is so very hydrated like i said if you are using retinol or any of like to be honest even if you're not using retinol you should be wearing spf 50 but especially if you are using a retinol you really do need to be wearing spf 50 um every day even if it's not sunny the sun the rays are still there you should be wearing spf 50 every day that's something i've been doing for a few years now and i have actually definitely noticed a improvement in my skin um and yeah i would really recommend that you wearing your spf 50 every day whether you're following your skin skincare routine or any of those so i will probably see you when i'm catching you up on some little fitness updates i'm gonna put in some final updates of my bulk i'm gonna i might actually i've got my checking back from my coach so i might actually take you through my checking with me um and explain a bit about my new coach but yeah nighttime skincare routine done I am currently just doing some approvals for my social media girl who's now in charge of my Coached by AV page. I feel like I can't really show you properly um, what's on here, but yeah, I've got my first hire. Um, so she uses Trello and it's so good. I've got all my like resources here and this is where I'll upload like client progress pictures and then we've got content ideas and then she's got content that she's working on and then I approve absolutely everything. So this is all ready for review. I've approved it all, that's all fine. And then it goes into content approved and then when it's published, it goes into content published and she's done three posts for me so far. And I'm just very, very, very happy that I'm now not doing everything on my own. Yeah, my coaching business is literally like my baby. So hiring someone has taken me a long time, but like this hire made so much sense. Like I've spoken to her on Instagram for years. We actually started talking because of Alphalete related stuff. So it's just another example of like how grateful I am to Alphalete because I feel like I've just got the perfect person working with me on this. And she's got such a keen interest in fitness that to be honest, when I'm reviewing the post that she's putting up, there's like minimal corrections to be done or minimal tweaks that I want doing. And it's taken a massive <laughs> stress of it because I love coaching, but like I, I will admit, I don't love doing the social media for my coaching page, but I love the coaching and I, you know, as much as <laughs> I just love what I do, I do need to view it as a business, which I haven't really been doing. Um, so it's, honestly really really good to have someone to help me and yeah I'm no longer a one woman band this is my first like sort of employee slash hire it's a very small hire but her work is honestly incredible like I'm super super happy with it I actually didn't finish this vlog last night so I'm finishing it this morning it's just rolled into like a sort of one and a half day vlog um I'm not gonna be like I think not to end the vlog I actually just had a really shit night and I just was a bit of a mess to be honest i couldn't finish the vlog but i'm gonna finish it now so yeah that's what i've just been doing um and that's all approved for this week now so we've got a reel going up we've got a client picture going up and then we've got client testimonial it's really cool because she like categorizes things into like um sort of like your 
just like viral content or like community builders or she like it's just really really good night even though i had a bit of a shit night i had the most exciting message from someone from alpha lee um so alpha lee are coming to birmingham in june if no one knows they are coming to birmingham in june which is in the uk it's about two hours away from me i was kind of like 50 50 on going just because it is my birthday weekend so i didn't really know what the plan was and i'd for a birthday weekend i kind of want to know what i'm doing do you know what i mean so um Anyway, I got a very exciting message yesterday and they're coming to Birmingham in June and they've actually like, like I've got like a proper, <laughs> like a proper invite and I'm so excited. Um, so I, I'm gonna be there in June. I think they're there on the 9th for the bodybuilding show. I'm gonna be in Birmingham from the 7th. So if anyone, you know, wants to meet up, girls only, not boys, that's a bit weird, um, so down to do that, I'll be there from the 7th and then the 8th, I think she said a photo shoot, I don't know what that's for but I'm very 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 excited for that, I don't know what it's for but whatever it is I'm just excited to have another chance to shoot with them again, I've shot with them once in October and it was like, this sounds really dramatic but like the things it did for me like internally, it was a life changing experience and I'm very very grateful and it's like a huge a huge, 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 huge dream. Like I'm not a model, come on. I'm not a model. So to be able to do that is like so much fun. And it's like a it's like a real pinch me thing. Cause like I, I'm literally from Bradford. Like what? I feel like Zayn Malik would be proud if he knew. He definitely doesn't know. It always blows my mind that Gigi Hadid had a Bradford City football club cake. Anyway, that's not the point of what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, They've got the bodybuilding show on the 9th and then on the 10th they've got an event at Gymshark um, lifting club and I think that's definitely going to be open to the public. I think you will have to pay for a ticket. I don't know exactly what it's going to entail but I will be there and I would really, 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 really like to meet some of you. So yeah, that was really, really exciting. That did definitely perk me up. Then there's a couple other things that I forgot to say mention yesterday because I feel like I was just very flustered yesterday but lifting straps you'll have seen i was using the 1mr ones now josh did send us these but trust me i'm under no obligation to post or do anything with these other than it was just like you can you know use them i used these for the first time yesterday i love my upper ones because you know they're pink yeah i love the aesthetics of these ones however these ones the pad is a little bit stiff i don't know if you can see that the pad's a little bit stiff and the fabric is a lot sort of stiffer now i've not tried these on rdls yet so i've only tried these and these are very very good for my rdls so i need to try these today for my rdls but for upper body yesterday these are definitely a much comfier lifting strap um and the padding is actually wider but you can still get them really small if you've got small wrists like you can still get them pretty small i wouldn't say they, were, they went quite as tight as these ones did but i don't know if that's just because this is a like tougher fabric so it feels tighter on my wrists but um yeah these lifting straps first time using them very 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 much impressed i wish they did pink i don't think josh will do pink but if he did do pink i love these in pink um but yeah lifting straps really 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 good and i do recommend them if you are finding that it's like your forearms and your grip giving out on lifts before it's the actual muscles is trying to target some of a pull day if it's not your for example your lats giving out it's your grip and your forearm strength that's giving out straps are going to be really really helpful rdls if it's your arms and grip that is giving up before it's your glutes and hamstrings these are going to be really really helpful so yeah you don't need lifting straps but when you start getting towards that point it is one thing that i do genuinely recommend obviously i went to the gym yesterday and i did want to have a little chat about gym anxiety because like i mentioned yesterday like in my gym now i'm so comfortable filming but to be honest it's not even about filming i'm so comfortable just being there filming talking to the camera when i'm in the gym it doesn't really bother me in my gym but going into ultra flex yesterday i mean i'm gonna it's not really relevant anyway because the music was so loud i'm gonna have to cut a lot of the audio out anyway like i couldn't have done it vlog style because i'll get a copyright strike definitely did find myself not really wanting to make it obvious that i was speaking to the camera if that makes sense so like i might talk to dan but i wouldn't talk to the camera if that makes sense it's not really a huge issue but i definitely did feel quite 
anxious going in there being in a new environment you don't know where anything is and to be honest my gym's had like a very weird period on Wednesdays recently where it's really busy in the afternoon at the time I normally go like that's my RDL day and every single platform and barbell is taken up and they're like doubled up in my gym as well so you can have someone squatting and deadlifting and they've all been in use and I just kind of sit around like a lemon like getting really really anxious so i just thought i'd give a little chat about gym anxiety and give you guys some tips so if you are starting a new gym one of the most helpful things and it sounds so obvious is take the induction and if they don't offer you one ask them to show you around and show you where where things are it's such a simple little thing and to be honest most gyms will do it anyway but it's such a simple little thing but it makes such a big difference just knowing where things are really 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 helps to ease that anxiety because you feel less like you're walking around like a lemon like i know that for me my anxiety is like everyone's looking at me thinking she doesn't know where she's going having an induction and knowing where things are sort of takes things out of that second thing would be with going into a new gym and all that sort of stuff having a structured program i'm not trying to sell you my coaching here although if you do want to be coached by me i'll leave the information below but you know you can get a free program online from anyone you don't need an online coach um having a structured program to follow so you know exactly what you're doing and again you're not walking around trying to make the session up as you go can really really help ease off that gym anxiety another thing is new equipment i get this still like if i don't know how to use a piece of equipment i get so scared of looking like again I, i'm just really scared of looking like i don't know <laughs> what i'm doing i don't know why there's probably something deeper going on there um but again this is gonna sound so simple and i know how hard this is because i do actually have social anxiety but ask someone who works at the gym if they wouldn't mind showing you how to use it i've done that two or three times at the gym i go to now and every single time they've turned around and been like yeah sure to be honest most of the time if they're not doing anything it's probably quite nice for them to have something to do rather than just you know not not having anything to do and they probably you know if you're working in a gym you like you're working in a gym because you like teaching people you like helping people so give them the opportunity to help you um, it's not a weird thing they won't be annoyed by it trust me like they will probably appreciate that you've asked um, and again then that sort of takes away the fear of not knowing what you're doing there is nothing wrong with asking questions same thing with like school it gets drilled into us you know if you don't know put your hand up and ask there's nothing wrong with asking questions and there's no such thing in my opinion i say this to clients there's no such thing as a stupid question when it comes to the gym when it comes to fitness so that can definitely help as well the thing that can help is just like wearing an outfit that you're comfortable in and this doesn't have to be like a bright matching set it could just be like joggers and a hoodie if that's what you're comfortable in make sure you're training in something that you are comfortable in because if you're wearing something that you're not comfortable in and then you notice that people are maybe looking at you your brain is automatically going to go to oh my god they're looking at me because you think i look bad because you're not comfortable in what you're wearing so make sure that what you are wearing to the gym is things that you are comfortable in when the gym's busy please know and i could take a note from this but you know i don't mind when people ask me there is nothing wrong with asking someone how many sets they've got left now don't go up to them whilst they're mid set and ask them this but you know when they're resting between sets there's nothing wrong with saying hi really sorry um could you let me know how many sets you've got left on this um and then you know if they've got loads of sets maybe ask another person who is using a similar equipment if there's like two of them um but then when you have asked something that i do think is important because it does make me a little bit uncomfortable when people do this when you have asked try not to stand directly next to the piece of equipment that you're waiting for maybe say to the person i'm going to be over here could you just come and let me know when you are done with the machine or with the platform or with the weight um i find it a bit awkward when people stand like directly next to you and wait if they're standing like a bit away or like sitting on the turf and waiting that's what i do sometimes i don't find that awkward but yeah just make sure that you don't stand like right you know say you've asked someone if you can use a leg press after them don't like stand directly behind the leg press and wait um and yeah and the other thing like the overriding thing with this is like people will glance at you in the gym people will look i don't like this idea that no one looks at anyone in the gym because 
it's human nature to people watch, I people watch. I don't stare, but like I do look around whilst I'm in the gym. I don't just look at myself the whole time. And I feel like it's better to prepare people for that than just saying no one's gonna look at you in the gym because that's not true. And then when it does happen, it can make people really uncomfortable. I think the main thing is to make people, make you guys aware of the fact that when people are, you know, looking around the gym, they're not looking at you. They're probably not even thinking about you because I know that I'm not. They're probably just people watching. That's something that I do. It's not that I'm thinking about this person's lifting wrong or why is that person wearing that or this or that or the other. It's just that I'm people watching and I'm just glancing around and I'm probably not even thinking about what they're doing. Obviously, someone staring is a completely different kettle of fish, but people do look at other people in the gym that is something that happens yeah i'm the same with pain like i can't stand it when someone tells me that something's not going to hurt when they know it's gonna hurt i'd rather know so i can actually just be prepared and i feel like for me gym anxiety one of the most unhelpful things i've been told is that no one's gonna look at you because it's just not true in my experience is not anyway i think it's just better to let people know that when people are maybe looking at you or looking around the gym they're not looking at you specifically they're probably just people watching they might be daydreaming i to be honest with staring unless it's obviously very weird i like to give people the benefit of the doubt because sometimes i can go into a daydream and it might look like i'm staring at someone but i'm just like completely zoned out thinking about something else looking at them but not really looking at them if that makes sense so i like to people give people the benefit of the doubt on that sort of stuff but those are just some little tips with gym anxiety and i hope that you know me being quite obviously shy in the gym and in this vlog can show you guys that you know i've been training for five years but if i'm in a new gym if there's new equipment if i'm even if the gym's busier than non normal i still get a bit of like anxiety and a bit of like nerves and a bit of uncomfortableness and i've been training for years so it's not something that you need to feel bad about or you know if you're getting anxious it's a sign that you shouldn't be there or you don't know what you're doing that's not true you deserve to be in the gym you do know what you're doing you're just having a little bit of a wobble and i have them all the time on your own if you get gym anxiety it happens to the best of us and i thought i'd just give you guys a little chat about that um but yeah i'm go probably gonna leave this vlog here what i'm gonna do now is go through my check-in with my new coach let me actually just show you i'll just give you a little insight into my new training program shall i so are we in are we in the frame yep we're in the frame i've got my weight here i've got my measurements here i need to redo my measurements actually um and then i've got my biofeedback markers so like mood energy all that sort of stuff which i rate for her and it goes into an average there and then we've got resistance training steps and then i've got my calorie intake as you can see i've got a few days missing because i had a few days where i didn't track digestion sleep heart rate which i don't fill out to be honest and then i have my um check-in which i need to fill in for her every single week um i may as well show you my training block this is my current training block for my cut so i'm doing lower one quads and hamstrings and then i've got an upper session which is a mix of push and pull and then i've got hamstrings and glutes and then I've got upper two, which again, push and pull. And then I've got quads and glutes. And I've also got calves in my program. And I've also got core work in my program as well. So that I will fill all that in. To be honest, I'm really bad at using the Google Sheets for tracking my training. Because I just, I don't really like Google Sheets for tracking training. It's really like glitchy on a phone. I just feel like it doesn't really work well on a phone. If anyone's got any favourite apps for tracking their workouts please let me know below because i'm definitely on the lookout for a better way of tracking my sessions because at the moment it's just in the notes app on my phone i fill all that out and then she does me like a video going through feedback i'm on week three of my cut now um i won't go over like my calories and macros like i've mentioned before it's just not helpful like my cutting calories and macros will be very different to the next person's um but i have lost weight i'm down from like 60 I think I was 66.3 and I'm now, this week I've been, a, 
somewhere between like 64.8 and 65. Um, with it being week three, a lot of that that's come off is water weight, which happens when you go straight into a deficit from eating more, your water weight drops. It actually takes a couple of weeks for it to actually be fat loss. Um, so yeah, I'm still trying to train super hard. You know, when you go on a cut, you don't have to do like a high, high reps, low weight, super low calorie, all this sort of stuff. Like I'm still keeping my training largely the same. It is a bit different because like she programs leg extensions at the start of the session. She programs hamstring curls at the start of a session. I'm not hip thrusting currently at the start of a session. Um, they're quite far down in my workouts and I'm hip thrusting two times a week. My quads and hamstrings day is absolutely savage. I've got hack squat and leg press in there and I've got leg extension before I even do that. So it's a very different way of programming, but to be honest, I'm enjoying doing something a bit different and it's nice to, you know, if we do need to tweak things, I don't really need to think about it. I can just let her know and she kind of takes control of that. That's what I like about having a coach. For me also, just like a little thing about me, I like having a coach when I cut because I can get very in my head about how I look when I cut. I think because I know currently I'm really not happy with my current um, body fat. I'm just not happy with my body fat at the moment, especially on my midsection. I'm not saying I look bad, it's just for me. I want to lean out a little bit. Um, and But when I go on a cut, because I come from a background of being super tiny and trying so hard to get away from that, I can sort of get really in my head about it and think I'm losing weight and losing size a lot quicker than I am. Um, and I can get a bit weird about it so having like an objective opinion is really 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 helpful otherwise just like some people would give up on a bulk three weeks in because they think they're getting fluffy i would give up on a diet phase three weeks in because i think i look completely different even in the grand scheme of things i looked at my checking pictures yesterday i don't look that different maybe a tiny bit smaller but like it's nothing crazy um and i know that i do want to lean out because like i am a little bit more uncomfortable at the moment and I just want to feel a little bit better you know it was getting to that point in a book where you end up feeling smaller because there's a lot more body fat covering your muscle mass and um, but I will put in some pictures of my bulk here so the picture on the on one of the sides I think it'll be the left hand side on the screen is from July so that's not when I started my bulk but I started it in April last year but that was just like a point where I took pictures because I hadn't taken pictures yet. And I was like, shit, I should probably take some pictures. Um, and then the other one is a few weeks ago, three weeks ago, starting my cut. The difference is crazy. My quads, hamstrings and glutes have filled out so much. I have gained body fat everywhere. You know, that, that size on my lower body is not pure muscle. Some of it is body fat. This is something that um, I've been getting asked about a lot recently, which is like, you know, am I going to lose my gains when I go on a cut? The likelihood of you losing muscle on a cut is very low if you're still training intensely, recovery is good, sleep is good, and you're eating your protein and you're eating a decent amount of calories for a deficit. The likelihood of you losing muscle mass is not really that high, but I think when people go on bulks, especially women, we like to believe that everything on, that we put on, on our lower body, is pure muscle and it's not some of its body fat, you know. We can accept that we might put body fat on on our upper bodies but when it comes to <laughs> cutting down we don't seem to be able to accept that some of what's on our lower bodies is also body fat and you're going to lose body fat everywhere there's no way of like out training where you lose body fat um so that's just something that's going to happen when you're going to cut you're going to get smaller everywhere um you do gain body fat even if you're doing like a lean bulk you're in a surplus of calories you will gain some body fat um i don't think i did my bulk absolutely perfectly i'm not gonna lie i do think i gained a little bit of unnecessary body fat but i'm not really too bothered about it to be honest um i store most of my body fat and you can see like in the backs of my arms um i store most of my body fat in my upper body so in my back especially around like my lats my upper arms my arms in general like um that's just where i store body fat so um, yeah, I don't really store that much fat in my lower body, but some of it will be fat that I've gained. But most of my body fat does go to my upper body, and that's again genetics. You know, it's like I was saying yesterday. I I'm not saying having a big upper body is a bad look. It's just not a look that I want because I struggle to grow my lower body so much. I don't want my upper body to be bigger than my lower body, if that makes sense. And if I train upper body 
super, super, super intensely with a lot of volume, my upper body will get very big, very quick. And that's fine. That's the look that some people want, but it's not the look that I want. So that's why um, I'll sometimes peel back on volume. Like at the moment, I do think my upper body is maybe a bit too much volume for me because I will grow very quick. Um, but yeah, that's just a little cut update. Week three of the cut dropped weight a little bit but most of it will be water weight at this point and I'm actually to be honest it's a bit of a relief being on less calories like being on high calories I find quite difficult so I find cutting a lot easier in terms of food um you know my natural appetite would bring me up to this amount of calories anyway so it's not like I'm starving or anything like that so I'm really enjoying the cut but yeah I am going to leave this video here because I'm on 1% I hope you enjoyed the video um let me know if you've got any tips on like retinol um let me know what you thought of the upper body day if you've got any gym anxiety tips please leave them down below for anyone that does struggle um and i will see you in the next video which should be an upper glue exercises video um but yeah please do give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it because it does help me out subscribe if you want to and you haven't already and i will see you um in my next video probably next weekend have a gorgeous Sunday because I think this is going up on Sunday.